Namaste everyone. Welcome to our next class in um, current electricity. So today's topic will be um, how cells are going to behave when we are going to group them either in series or in parallel. So we begin with the series combination of cells and we are going to discuss each of these combination under two topics. If cells are going to be identical, what's going to be the result? And if cells are going to be non-identical, what is going to be the result? So the first case that we are going to pick here is the combination of a lot of identical cells that are going to be grouped together in series. So if I'm going to consider M cells, each of which have uh, an individual EMF, E and an internal resistance R. That's why we call them as identical cells. If I am going to connect such cells in series, effectively I will get a circuit that is given at the bottom of the initial one. That is, all the cells are in series. So the EMF will become effective EMF. This is equivalent to a single cell of EMF E and internal resistance R. But what is going to be that effective EMF? But since all these cells are going to be connected in series, my effective EMF will be nothing but the sum of the individual EMFs. You know that along a series circuit, the potential difference and also the EMF adds up along the path. So the effective EMF of such a combination is going to be simply n times e. If you are going to have five cells, it's five e, 10 cells, 10 e, n cells, n e. And also we know that the resistances connected in series also add up to their uh, sum of individual resistances. So my R effective is also going to be equal to n times R. So this combination of n identical cells has come down to a single cell of EMF n times E and internal resistance n times R. Now what happens if such a uh, battery, now this becomes a battery because it is a combination of cells. What happens if this is connected to a load? I'm going to get a circuit like this, right? Now if I'm going to analyze this circuit applying KBL, Kirchhoff's voltage law, so let us assume that the current through the circuit is going to be I. I'm going to consider the current through the circuit to be I. And if I'm going to consider the circuit, uh, the loop in the anti-clockwise direction, what is going to happen if I'm going to consider it in the anti-clockwise direction? So let us apply KVL in the anti-clockwise direction. So the product of current and resistances are taken as positive if the loop direction and the current direction are the same. So the current due to uh, the current through R will have a positive sign. The current through the internal resistance will have a positive sign. But since the entry into the cell is from the negative terminal, the EMF becomes negative, and I get an equation like this: I R plus I into, remember this R that you are seeing in the circuit is the effective resistance and the E is the effective EMF because we have drawn this as our equivalent circuit, equivalent to the N cells that we put in series. So it becomes like this. So I'm gonna substitute for my R effective and E effective, I get like this. If I am going to rearrange this particular equation, to find out the current in the circuit, I have Ne upon R plus N into R. Now, this particular current that is going to flow through the circuit, I'm going to discuss about that under two special cases. We are going to analyze the circuit. What happens um, to this current when I'm going to look at it in two different angles? So, the first thing that I'm going to look at as a special case is. What happens if my load is very, very small in comparison to the effective resistance of the 
circuit. So if R becomes extremely smaller, so that means R plus NR can be approximately equal to NR because R is very negligible. So I can take my R plus NR to be um, approximately equal to NR. If I'm going to do that substitution in the current equation that I have over here, I have I to be equal to NE divided by NR. So the N gets cancelled and I get my current to be equal to E by R. Now look at this current which is flowing through the load resistor. Does this have any difference from the current that would have been supplied through the resistor had I put only one cell? No, isn't it? Because E by R would have been the current had I connected only one cell. So what did we achieve by grouping N cells? Nothing. So there is no point if I'm going to group N identical cells in series and connect it across a negligible resistance. It is of no use because the current is the same as the current due to a single cell. So if I am going to uh, use such a combination, let us look at what I should do. My second special case where R is very high, the load resistance is very high in comparison to the mm, effective internal resistance. So what happens in that case? In that case, R plus NR will be approximated to R because NR is extremely small. In which case, what happens to my I? My I becomes equal to N times E by R. Since the internal resistance is negligible, E by capital R becomes the current due to a single cell. Isn't it, children? Imagine that you have only one cell of EMF E. Then the current through the resistor will be E by R. And by connecting N such cells in series and making sure that the load resistance is quite high in comparison to the individual resistances, we find that the current through the resistor has increased N times the current if it had been only one cell. So this is N times the current due to the single cell. So what are we inferring from all this when I'm going to connect N identical cells in order that the current becomes high, in order that my, I get a greater current from the uh, combination of N cells, I have to make sure that I connect it across a circuit where the load resistance is quite high. Otherwise, there uh, there is no point in connecting N cells because it does not give me any appreciable increase in the current that is flowing through the particular circuit. Is that clear, children? Now we move into our second case where I'm going to connect N cells, but each of them having a different EMF and a different internal resistance. Again, Though they might have different EMFs and different uh, internal resistances, they are going to come down to a single unit with effective EMF E and effective resistance R. Now, in order that we understand the working of this particular combination, let's look at a simpler form where I'm going to consider only two cells and we will then uh, uh, you know, generalize that particular equation to N cells. So let me consider two cells in series with different EMFs and different internal resistances. And again, I'm going to connect it to an external load and apply KVL to my closed loop in the anti-clockwise direction. So it's going to be the same. The current through the resistor uh, that is the load will have a positive sign. The same through the internal resistance is R1 and R2. And since the entry into the cells is through the negative terminal of the uh, cell, uh, my EMFs are going to be negative in the equation that I'm going to write. So I end up getting IR plus IR1 plus IR2 minus E1 minus E2 equal to zero. If I'm going to rearrange this particular equation, I get it like this. 
But what is IR? Isn't it the drop across the resistor? So can I replace it by VR? And if I'm going to write, if I'm going to write it as V, this equation becomes something similar to V is equal to E minus IR. Isn't this what we wrote in the previous class when we were discussing about the terminal potential difference and the EMF of a cell? So I'm going to replace my equation with this where we are is the potential drop across the resistor e effective becomes the effective emf of the particular circuit and r effective becomes the effective internal resistances of the cells connected in series so what happens over here this circuit is going to behave like a single unit where the um, effective emf is nothing but the combination the sum of the individual EMFs. So you can see here we have added two cells. So the effective EMF came out to be E1 plus E2. But if I'm going to connect N cells, the effective EMF will become E1 plus E2 plus and so on up to EN. Now, similarly, if I'm going to compare the effective uh, resistances, so what happens simply becomes equal to the sum of the individual res internal resistances. That is, our effective is nothing but r1 plus r2 up to n terms so this is how a series circuit is going to behave if i'm going to connect n cells of different emfs and different um, internal resistances so this will be the, the you can write um, the uh, expression for the current then current will come out to be um, e divided by r plus r then you get your uh, you can do that also if you want to write uh, the current here so current what will you have you have current r plus r1 plus r2 if i'm going to rewrite this equation is equal to E1 plus E2, right? So if I'm going to replace E1 plus E2 by E effective and R1 plus R2 as R effective, so what can I write as I? I will be equal to E effective divided by R plus R effective. Isn't this the same as what we wrote again in the previous class for current? When you are going to pass it through a, a, a load resistor, it becomes equal to E divided by R plus R. So whether we write it in terms of V or whether we write it in terms of I, um, this behaves like a single unit with effective EMF E and uh, effective internal resistance R. Is that clear children? So that's about our series combination. Now we move on to our second case that is combining cells in parallel. So we begin with uh, uh, you know, the first uh, uh, form of discussing it that is combining identical cells in parallel. So let us consider in this circuit that if E1 is equal to E2 is equal to En, each of these cells are going to have the same EMF E. And if I'm going to consider R1 is equal to R2 in the similar way is equal to Rn. If I'm going to consider all of them to have the same internal resistances. So obviously this combination is going to, um, uh, you know, uh, come down to a single uh, unit with the, a cell of effective EMF E and internal resistance R. But, but since we are considering all these cells in parallel, we know that across the parallel combination, say for example, I'm going to find out what is the um, uh, EMF across these two terminals. Because they are connected in parallel, the effective EMF will be nothing but the EMF of a single cell because in parallel, the EMF remains a constant. So the total EMF of all the cells will be equal to the EMF of a single cell, making my effective EMF equal to the EMF of each of the cell, that is E. But what happens if I'm going to connect uh, N resistors in parallel? We know that one by R effective will be equal to, since all of them are going to have the same internal resistance, 1 by R plus 1 by R up to N terms, isn't it? 
there are n terms on this so i have n times adding up one by r which is going to give me n by r if i'm going to take the reciprocal of the uh, given equation i mean the written equation in order to find my effective e, um, effective internal resistance i will get my effective internal resistance to be 1 by n times the individual resistance i hope that is clear you will be remembering your um, 10th standard uh, physics where we had calculated what will be the effective resistance if you connect them in parallel so this eventually reduces down to such a circuit which is familiar to us from our previous discussion in series but if i'm going to apply kvl in this also and i'm going to write the equation for kvl the only difference will be in the substitution of e effective and r effective so e effective is going to be substituted as e and r effective is going to be substituted as r by n if you are going to rearrange this particular equation take lcm and then finally write an expression for the current through the circuit you are going to get it as ne divided by n plus r so what are we left with now we are going to again look at two special cases if my load resistance is going to be appreciably high and if my load resistance is going to be negligibly small so let's look at our special cases again the first case where my load resistance is quite high try to remember when we did the previous case of combination of n identical cells in series we said that this is our favorable condition for using um, n cells in series because that is when my current through the resistor current through my load increases um, and gives me uh, a purpose of connecting n cells in series but let's see what happens in this case when r becomes much much higher than r that means nr plus r can be approximated to nr isn't it children because it is uh, the neglig uh, the internal resistance is negligibly small so what how does my current reduce to my current reduces to ne by nr it becomes equal to e by r isn't this the current due to a single cell so this is completely different or opposite to what we saw in a series combination that if my load resistance is going to be quite high then there is no point in connecting n cells i would have achieved the same result by connecting a, just a single cell to achieve the same current so what is that that we are going to do we are going to make sure that my load resistance is negligibly small in comparison to the external um, i'm sorry internal resistance in which case nr plus r can be approximately equated to r now in which case what happens to my current my current becomes equal to n times the current due to a single cell so let's get that very clearly in case of a series combination in order that i um, achieve a purpose of connecting n cells i have to make sure that my load resistance is appreciably high and whereas if i am going to connect the same n cells in parallel i have to make sure that my load resistance is negligibly small in order that i get the uh, maximum current in the circuit is that clear children so now we move on to our next case what if um so that's what uh, this particular inference says in order that you get a large amount of current if you are connecting n cells in parallel make sure that your external resistance is very small as compared to your in uh, effective internal resistance so let's look at this very same circuit with n cells that are non identical and connected in parallel so as usual let's look at the simple form that is two cells and then we will uh, carry on that particular equation to n cells now when i am going to look at this circuit which is on your screens we have to apply both kvl and kcl because we are reaching a junction over here so let us assume that the current through the circuit is i and reaches this particular junction and let me assume that um, the current that goes in the upper path is i1 and the current that comes down is i2 so let's consider this as i1 and i2 
If I'm going to apply KCL at that particular junction, I know that the sum of the currents flowing into the junction is always equal to the currents flowing out of the junction. So I have I is equal to I1 plus I2. So what happens to my I2 from this equation? I2 becomes equal to I minus I1. And you can see that I minus I1 is already written in the path of I2. And that has been obtained by applying KCL at that particular junction. So now I'm going to again consider this in the anti-clockwise direction, but I'm going to look at this in two different loops. So what is the first loop that I'm going to consider? If I'm going to apply KBL in the upper loop, that is the loop containing E1, R1 and capital R, Again, I'm going to consider it in the anti-clockwise direction. So the current through R and R1 are going to be positive while the EMF is going to be taken as negative. So I have this particular equation applying KVL in the upper loop. Now what happens if I'm going to apply KVL in the lower loop, that is the loop containing E2, R2 and capital R. Again, in the anti-clockwise direction, if I'm going to apply with the current conventions, with the directions, proper directions, I'm going to get this particular equation. Now, what am I going to do with these two equations? I'm going to try and solve these two equations for current I. For which, what am I going to do? I'm going to multiply this equation by R2. And I'm going to multiply this equation by R1 in order that I can eliminate I1. Unless I eliminate I1, I cannot find I, right? If I am going to do this, and that is what you are going to do. You're going to pause this video. You're going to multiply by R2, R1, add or subtract the equations as you find uh, appropriate. And you are going to eliminate I1 from the two equations in order to get me the result that is the current that is flowing through the circuit. Now, if you had paused the video properly calculated, you are going to get this expression for the current through the circuit. Now I'm going to slightly rearrange this equation. Why am I going to rearrange this equation? Because we know that if I'm going to write I, it should be of the form E divided by R plus R, which we saw in the previous class, as well as a couple of minutes ago, where E becomes the EMF of the circuit and small r becomes the um, internal resistance of that particular uh, potential source. Now, if I have to do that, I have to eliminate this R plus R that is present with my load resistance. So what am I simply going to do? I'm going to divide both the numerator and the denominator by R, R1 plus R2, making me get such an equation where I is equal to this. Hope you are getting this along with me as you are working out in your notebook. Now, if I look at this particular equation that we have got, this is something similar to what I wrote just a minute ago. That's E divided by R plus R. Now, what is the capital E that I get over here? The capital E, that is E1 R2 plus E2 R1 divided by R1 plus R2, that becomes the effective or the equivalent EMF of the combination of these two cells in parallel. So if I am going to uh, look at these two cells, these two cells are going to behave like a single cell with this particular EMF and this internal resistance when connected across a load R. Is that clear children? This is about your um, non-identical cells. That is cells that have different EMF and different internal resistance. Now, if I'm going to consider more than this, that means you're going to get a more complicated uh, uh, you know, expression because we have more cells connected in um, series. So we will have R1, R2 plus R2, R3 plus R1, R3 divided by R1 plus R2 plus R3. So that becomes a slightly bigger equation. So that is the reason we have looked at it using only two cells. And this is how the circuit is going to behave when you're going to put non-identical cells in parallel to a load resistance. So we have discussed cells being grouped in series and parallel, two broad headings. Under series, we saw identical and non-identical cells. And under parallel, we saw identical and non-identical cells. So by now, you should be in a position 
to analyze any circuit that is going to be given to you, which is a combination of cells connected either in series or in parallel. So hopefully in the next class where we will be discussing about the potentiometer, which is used to measure the EMF of a given cell or to measure uh, or to you know compare the uh, EMFs of two given cells, we will be finishing off this chapter and hope you are practicing well um, with the, all the concepts that are being discussed. I will see you next class with potentiometer. Till then, keep studying and stay safe.